Hey guys, this is Anthony Avina. Welcome to Tag Fridays. Um, I know by the time this goes up, it'll be Saturday, but um, I'm filming this um, late at night. I'm going to be doing a new challenge today. It's called the Storyteller Challenge. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's done this yet, but basically what you do is um, you uh, try and make up a story as fast as you can. Um, now, if you can play this with more than one person, then you guys can see uh, whoever tells their story the fastest wins. Um, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to try and tell a short, short, short story um, in just a few minutes. And um, it's kind of a combination um, a weekly reading slash Tag Friday video because... Um, I did not film a weekly reading this week. Uh, it's been quite a hectic week if you've been watching my vlogs. So um, I'm going to be doing this, the Storyteller Challenge. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, and in the words of the Joker from the Dark Knight movies, the great late Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so, let's do an innocent kind of, uh, scary story. Um, okay. There was a young, a young kid, a young boy named Timmy, um, walking home from school one day. Um... He lived in California. Uh, the year was 2012. And uh, he lived with his mother in a apartment in Los Angeles. Um, walking home one day, um, he spotted... It's so hard to make this up at the top of my head. I usually plan my things out anyways. Um, he spots a small animal, um, sitting by itself in the, this dark alley. Um, upon closer inspection, um, it looks like a stuffed, um, animal, like a stuffed bear or something. It's a stuffed bear. Um, the bear is dirty, it's cold, um, it's wet from having been rolled around the streets, and, uh, yet he takes pity on it. He falls in love with it. He's an eight-year-old boy, um, who's living with a single mother who works at all, all hours of the day to try and support them. And he's got no friends. So, he decides he's going to take it home. He's going to clean it up and, um, give it a good, good home. He takes it home. He gives it a bath. He cleans it up, and he decides to name the bear, um, Pippin. Um, his mother comes home that night after working a, um, 12-hour shift at the local supermarket. And she sees Pippin sitting on his, on, uh, Timmy's bed. Um, the mother is hesitant to let her son keep it. Um, because she doesn't trust anything found on the streets. Um, she goes over the bear, looking to see if anything is hidden inside, whether it be drugs, if, um, there's a weapon, anything. Um, and Timmy is upset because he wants to keep the bear. It's his only friend in the world. He says, he begs her, Mommy, please, please don't take my bear away from me. And so, much to her... Um, hesitation, she lets them, lets Timmy keep the bear. He is overjoyed, and he goes on a month-long journey of becoming fast, fast friends with the bear. Uh, the mother, when she is at home, will overhear her son, Timmy, having conversations with the bear. Um, and... She's worried at first, but she rationalizes it to herself that he is a young boy with an overworked imagination. And um, it's normal for a boy to 
have imaginary friends or to give life to inanimate um, objects to be the surrogate friend they don't have. So she lets it be and she continues to work. Um, now, one day, um, as she's getting ready to leave work, she hears her son talking to Pippin. And all of a sudden, she hears a voice uh, responding to her son. She rushes into the room, looks around, and asks her son who's talking to him. He, of course, he says Pippin. She looks under the bed, she looks under his, or under his bed, she looks in the closets, nothing there. Uh, she checks all the doors, she checks all the windows, she goes over every inch of their apartment, but there's no one there. No doors have been broken, no windows have been shattered, nothing. She um, decides to take uh, her son with her um, to work. Uh, because she doesn't feel safe leaving him by him by himself in the house. Uh, he begs her to bring Pippin with him, but she refuses, saying that they need to have a day to themselves, and she promises to take him to dinner after work. And so they leave Pippin home. Um, they she goes about her day, watching her son as she works at the grocery store. Uh, an hour before she used to get off work, she notices that her son has. Um, been sitting quietly in her office. Um, she works as a um, assistant manager at this grocery store in LA. Um, and he's mumbling to himself. She goes over and asks him if everything's okay. And Pippin is sitting there in his lap. And he's having a conversation with Pippin. She asks him where he got the bear. And he says that Pippin missed him and came to the store himself. Uh, she's feeling very upset. And she's feeling very uh, nervous about um, how this bear could have gotten to their store without anyone bringing it to there. So she decides it's time for Pippin to go. She gets the bear. She puts it into the incinerator um, um, at their work and tells her son that she will buy him a brand new bear. Um, he is upset, but she rationalizes that in the end it will be good for him. Um, they go home that night after grabbing some dinner, and around midnight she steers, starts to hear knocks. Um, she goes to her son's bedroom, and he is fast asleep. She looks around the house, doesn't see or hear anything. Just when she begins her thinking that it was all in her head, she hears the knocks again, coming from the front door. Um, she slowly goes to the door, opens it, and finds the hall empty. She looks up and down the hall, sees nothing. She comes back inside, locks and latches the door, turns around and sees a trail of ash leading from the front door to her son's bedroom. She runs to her son's bedroom, and there's Pippin, half charred from being in the incinerator, but still there. Um, the doll's not moving, it's not giving an evil grin, it's just there, sitting with its uh, black eyes staring at her. Um, now this is just a common um, teddy bear kind of acne toy. Um, Nothing menacing, it's not a doll, it doesn't have a silly grin, it's just your average bear. Um, she picks it up, um, tears running down her face for she feels like she's losing her mind. And she goes to the window, and just as she's about to toss Pippin out the window, um, she hears a voice behind her. Put it down, it says. She slowly turns around thinking that her son has seen the bear and is reluctant to let it go. But it's not her son. There is a man standing there. She looks at him and says, Who are you? He goes, I'm Pippin. I died in that alley your son found the bear at three years ago. I have been stuck between the land of the living and the land of the dead. Someone left that bear right before your son found it. 
I was desperate to be in human contact, and so I attached myself to the bear. I've been talking to your son, and I cannot go back to being ignored. You will put that bear back, and you will let me be. Her body is shaking. She has no idea what to do. She slowly sets the bear down and starts shaking her head, convinced that she's having a hallucination. She counts to five. One, two, three, four, five. She opens her eyes, and Pippin's gone. The man must have been all in her head. She closes the window, leaves the bear all forgotten, and goes back to her bed. Just as she's laying down, she feels a cold, hard hand rests itself on her shoulder. She turns in her bed, and before she can scream, she stares right into the eyes of the man who was standing in her living room. Pippin is alive, and before long, he comes into possession of her. When the little boy wakes up, he sees the little bear Pippin is sitting in his room, all cleaned up. He smiles and laughs and goes to see his mother. His mother sits bl staring blankly at the wall, for his mother is not there anymore. His mother is gone, and now Pippin lives. And there you guys go. That was slightly darker than I intended. Uh, but that is just an off-the-hand uh, short story uh, that I came up with in my head. Um, when I'm not so tired, when I haven't had such a long week, I'm sure I can come up with something better. But this is my trial run at the Storyteller Challenge. Um, <sighs> who do I challenge in this? You know what, I'm going to save it because I'm going to do a, another uh, edition of this when I have more time and when I have more um, sleep, uh, when I'm more fully in my uh, wits. So, um, for now, this is consider this the trial run. Uh, this is the trial run of the Storyteller Challenge, and I hope you guys enjoyed that story. Um, in the comments below, tell me what kind of story you'd like to hear me tell them next time. Um, please uh, give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like this video, comment on it, favorite it, and share it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you guys tomorrow. This is Anthony Vina, signing off. Peace out, guys. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe.